This is my new CNC router base. It's pretty cool with the machine being bolted down to it and with retractable casters, it's solid but still movable. And in this video, I want to show you how I build it from start to finish. I used leftover beech and cherry hardwood from the dining table built for my parents and two sheets of OSB as material. Let's hope I can find all necessary pieces within this pile. This will be fun. I think I was successful. Every piece is now labeled. I just have to make sure not to screw up. I prepared my table and bandsaw with blades for the milling process, which I've already shown in many videos. So let me summarize it here in 30 seconds. First, I cut to rough length with the circular saw, leaving about 5 to 10 centimeters extra. Then I cut off the bark and made a straight cut with the sliding table, followed by cutting to rough width, leaving about 5 millimeters extra with either the table saw or the bandsaw since it has a thinner curve. Next, flattening one face and edge on the jointer, followed by thicknessing. In cases like here, where I need to remove a lot, I also cut to rough thickness with the bandsaw to save time at the planer. Then it's back to the table saw to cut to final length and width. I left the leg parts as thick as possible and glued them into a big block. This was necessary because I only could get 7 pieces out of the raw material. Clamp. 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 This big slab is now a bit over 31 centimeters wide. That's enough to cut four seven centimeter wide legs out of. I then again cut this big block into four roughly oversized pieces on the bandsaw, followed by jointing two sides. Since the legs are square, I cut the other sides with one fence setting at the table saw, which avoids planar snipe at the same time. And although this blade is called a roughing blade, with a consistent and slower feed rate, it can produce nice and smooth cuts. You be the judge. The surfaces on top are jointed, the lower ones are sewn. Okay, I got all pieces cut to size. Next is some joinery. Except for the two front rails, every piece here gets a slot in the edge for a panel. The back legs get a tenon, a slot and another tenon on two faces. While the front legs get the slot only on one of the faces and on the other only the tenons. I continued using the table saw with the same blade. It's relatively thin, so I'm cutting the slot in multiple passes while flipping the piece every time to make the slot centered. And of course I did this to the legs and the other pieces until it fit the panel, which I somehow forgot to record. To cut the mortises I have a router with a straight bit and a jig that's a big transparent base with a fence as an edge guide. To set it up I plunge it into the existing slot and make sure it touches the inner edge. And then I set the edge guide to touch the back edge of the workpiece in this position. The depth of the mortise is 25 millimeters and I'm ready to cut. With these settings I cut up to the line that I marked before. Depending on the router and the router bit you may have to do this with multiple passes. On the other side you need to plunge into the material. Not all router bits can do that so you might have to use multiple passes again. Another thing you can do is to remove the bulk of the material with a series of plunge cuts if the router bit can do that and finish the mortise afterwards. Now to cut the matching tenons, I'll use the table saw and the crosscut fence. The distance between the fence and the other edge of the sawtooth is the tenon length, in my case 23 millimeters. And since the tenon thickness is about the same as the slots, I set the blade height to a little bit less than this. With a series of cuts, I remove the material from both sides and the result is a tenon. It's too big on purpose because removing wood with another pass is way easier than trying to add wood again. All the other pieces should be a time lapse, but some professional dude screwed up the camera settings and all I have is this one photo. Let's look at it for 5 seconds and show some honor to that never born time lapse. And there are all the tenons cut. Now since the front rails don't have a slot, I just removed that bit of material with the same setup. Alright, that frame assembly looks good. The back panel dimensions now are the inner frame dimensions, in my case 44 centimeters plus two times the slot depth, so plus three centimeters, minus maybe one or two millimeters to add space for glue. And the same in this direction, 89.4 plus three centimeters, so 92.2. .2. A dry assembly of the whole frame tells me if everything fits and also the side panel dimensions. Speaking of them, let's cut them to size and also chamfer the edges, which makes fitting them into the slot easier. I also decided to match their color to the machine. Optional steps before the glue ups are rounding the edges, 8mm for the inside, 2mm for the outside and sanding. 
The glue up starts with the back panel, which I glue centered into one rail slot. I then put the top rail in place and clamp the legs to that, which should ensure that the panel is straight in the slot. Then I glued the two legs on and clamped everything with a band clamp. Of course, a check and adjustment for square and then I already glued on the top rail. Make sure your best hammer friend is close by. For the front frame it's simpler because there's no panel and everything can be glued at once. But under no circumstances put that hammer away. You will need it. Next I cut scrap wood into two spacers of 56.8 cm length, which is the drawer opening I need later. The spacers put this piece in the right location, where I can screw it in place. It's the same for the front middle leg piece. I can use the same spacers to position the piece and I'll fasten it with two screws that are sunken in the rails. I'll shut up here, because the best explanation is to watch. That went pretty well, now you can connect the two. To tie everything together I won't glue the tenons, but instead screw it together with these washer head screws. And that has quite a few advantages I'll show you in a bit. First the panels get glued into the stretchers like before and I again clamp them together straight until the glue sets. Dry assembled again, I clamped it together with the help of my good buddy the hammer, made sure everything is flush and glued the top stretchers to the side panels, making them flush with the legs. It was almost already perfect, but I had to use two diagonal clamps with pretty light pressure to bring it fully into square. While it's clamped, I checked if the middle stretchers and panels still fit and then glued them together just like the side panels. Then some simple time travel. The glue is dry, but I leave it clamped together until all the screws are installed. I wanted to sink the screw heads below the surface and although they kinda drill their own hole, it's a good idea to pre-drill to prevent splitting. And then repeat and 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 repeat. Now what's so nice about the screws? I next would like to add a finish while none of the other components like drawer slides are attached and I have easy access to everything. But finishing this, it's not light anymore and honestly a pain. But since I can remove all the screws again and disassemble it into flat pieces, it's pretty simple again. Watching me apply a finish is about as fun as doing it yourself, so we'll skip that all together. I use two coats of this. Next comes the interior with three drawers that I got from an old kitchen. Since I didn't want to modify them, I made the cabinet opening fit the drawers. That's where I used the spacer because that's the width of the drawer. I only have to replace the fronts because they used to be flush with the outside of the cabinet. This doesn't work here so I have to make some that are flush with the inside. This kind of drawer system always has some kind of release mechanism. Let's see... This here. So I only need to screw these parts to a new board and snap it on. Obviously not this one. The other drawers are a bit taller and they have this rod at the top that supports the front here and also adjusts the tilt of the front. But taking this apart is no problem. This piece usually is just snapped into the corner. And in the front that's a neat little mechanism. This can be tilted down and then I should be able to pull it out. This is a plastic anchor with a conical bit in the front and as you straighten this out, this kind of cam lever, holds the metal bit back which spreads the anchor in the hole and holds it pretty well in place. The rest is the same. Two of the tall drawers didn't fit, so I shortened one. What an unpleasant task. The slides of the system is this part which is like half extension and the second part is integrated in the sides which is also kind of half extension on this part here, which then makes it full extension. As I want the fronts to be flush with the cabinet, I need to offset the slides by the thickness of the fronts, plus that maybe two millimeters into the cabinet. So roughly like this. To mount the slides, I'll screw them to these strips of wood that are the thickness of the panel offset, 
So this is now flush and when they are screwed to the strips I can mount them in the cabinet and don't have to align anything. The first slide is basically flush with the bottom. The second one is 22 centimeters from that and the third one 12 centimeters from that. These measurements are of course based on the existing drawers I had to work with. I drilled mounting holes for the slides and also slots for mounting in the cabinet. The other side is the same, with only using thinner strips. I now should be able to just slide these drawers in. Perfect! Looks a bit weird without the fronts. Let's make them. Unfortunately, the last piece of phenolic coated resin plywood I have on hand right now is not wide enough. But I think I'll just glue some thick edge bending on and that will fix it. Ah, so satisfying. Let's watch it again. And again. And again. Okay, that's enough. But also this. Ah, nice. And this. Beautiful. The old drawer fronts had a bottom overlap of about 2 cm. Mine will have 0. That means when I transfer the whole locations, I need to subtract 2 cm from the bottom edge. Here. And here. And of course the hole for the upper rod. Alright, let's see if that fits. It doesn't. Wonderful. But what these slides also have is a screw for height adjustment. So that's an easy fix. Perfect. Only the last front I had to custom fit. And a final touch with a roundover, which visually makes a big difference. Removing the drawers is pretty simple as well, just lift up and slide it out. By rotating the rod you push or pull on the front and can adjust the tilt. The assembled cabinet is heavy and too big to fit through my shop door. But I can take it apart and assemble it again elsewhere in about 10 minutes. Now I can also add leveling feet. I have a whole video on making them, so let's try again go over that in 30 seconds. I cut plywood circles with a diameter of the cabinet legs width, this time using the table saw. Worked pretty well. Then I drilled a small and a big hole in the center for an M12 bolt with a washer and chamfered the edges. Spray paint is optional. An M10 square washer with M12 threads cut into works as a mounting flange. Assembly then is the bolt with a washer, another washer, a nut which gets a cross pin, then another nut and the flange. On the legs needs to be a hole bigger than the bolt, drilling that before assembling with the screws. The flange gets screwed on and that's it. Ah crap, 33 seconds. Oh well. I also want to add these workbench casters with a foot lever. However, they are not cheap and most of the time the CNC will stay in place. So I'll also use these quick release plates that get screwed to the cabinet instead of the caster. And that allows me to reuse the casters elsewhere. This is great! Now I size the cabinet to the feet of the CNC router, so when I now put it on there, the feet are in the center of each leg. And I not only want to put it on that with the rubber leveling feet, I made some kind of mounting flange where I can bolt the whole machine to the cabinet. I can still level it out with these. Basically this makes it then one piece, increasing the stiffness a little and definitely the weight, which is always a good thing for a CNC router. Man, this looks pretty good as it is. Anyways, I centered it out as good as possible on the legs. I'll now mark around that, drill a recess for the bolts of the flanges and then put the machine on the bolts. Sometimes holding the weight is more important than a good scene, but you get the idea. And once there, I could tighten down the flanges. We removed the machine again for now because I will first level out the base at its new home, which is right underneath the wood shelf. That might seem stupid, but I value the free floor space I get through that higher than the lost wood storage space of just three shelf units. Of course, these are still in the way, but I just need to throw a saw at that to fix. Adjusting until it's done. And now it's locked. It's almost done, but now I have to tell you about this video's sponsor, 
which is me. And that's a good thing, because usually sponsors want between 60 or 90 seconds of video for their sponsoring. I only need 20. Screw that counter. All I want to tell you is, I have plans available for this space, so you can build it yourself. It comes with written instructions, pictures, drawings, a 3D model, an ad-free version of this video, and a configurator that lets you adjust all the dimensions of the space so you can make it exactly fit your needs. Say it's another machine or just a workbench. Pretty cool. A link is in the description and that's all I have to say. The final touches are handles for the drawers and a bottom shelf on the left side for the computer. And now it's done. I love how solid this now is. 10 times better than before. And please don't worry too much about the wood above it. In a future project, I wanna build an enclosure for the machine that will fix that risk. So for now, goodbye. And at last, a little preview for my next project in the lowest drawer. The automatic tool changer, couple of holders and all this stuff to hopefully make it work. It will be amazing.